Okay, folks, we want to say thanks and welcome to this exclusive interview. This interview, which has now become like a tradition, and on the line as our guest is uh, the founding president of Tapman University, Professor Dr. Dr. Elizabeth Davis Russell. Today is her birthday, and it coincides with the commissioning of Radio Phoenix, as well as the Charter Day of the William V. S. Tapman University. And she has kindly consented to uh, grant us this traditional interview. It's now become a traditional interview. Uh, Doc, let's say happy birthday and welcome to your radio station from your Tupman University. It is not my university, but our university and our radio station. Okay. Because it was all a collective. Okay, we appreciate uh, your humility in this one. And, uh, yep, Doc, again, we want to say happy, happy birthday. Uh, I believe it's still morning hour in your end, but it's afternoon here, and we have many people listening. Uh, just say hi to the students of Tepan University, as well as all of those old and new employees who are tuned in right now. Well, greetings to all of you. Um, some of you, I hope, that were there working with me are still there working. And to students, uh, probably by now, none of the students who were students when I were there are still there. Uh, but to the new students, welcome. Hello, rather. It's not my place to welcome you, but <laughs> hello to all of you. All right, Doc. Uh, let's go right into it. By now, what would you have been up to? Uh, at this time during your days at Tupman University? Well, given that this is Charter Day, uh, in my birthday, several things probably would have happened based on what we had done in the past. And that would be some kind of observance, some kind of celebration of the university. And then... In the evening, uh, as Dr. Caballoso and others would do a celebration of my birthday. But during the day, there would be, uh, one of the things I love would be watching the students play soccer, the college compete against one another uh, for the trophies. That was usually an enjoyable event. Right. Okay, Doc, for the sake of uh, new and younger listeners and students of Tupman University, can you give us a short uh, recount about how TC became TU? Well, uh, let me start with saying that uh, when I was appointed, I had not been in Maryland County in 37 years, during which time the College of Technology had been constructed and operated. And so I didn't know what the college looked like, let alone what damage had been done during the war. So one of the first things I did was to request pictures of the campus while I was still here in the States working. The pictures, what the pictures revealed were concrete pillars and shells of buildings that had served as the campus of Tupman College of Technology and a monument of the late president of Liberia, well, William V.S. Tupman, after whom the college was named. So I knew that uh, looking at those pictures that I would have quite a task. So what I did next was to request a structural assessment of the buildings that were left standing just to make sure that they were structurally sound or if any had to be demolished. And then did an environmental scan of Berlin County to ascertain what its weaknesses 
and its needs were. And what Beskin revealed was that there were many serious challenges to development in Maryland County. Um, one of the outstanding ones was that um, there was no institution of higher education within the county, the nearest one being over 300 miles away. And so I think this was critical to the kind of institution we would we would um, strive to build. What that said was that we could not just have um, college of technology, that the needs of the region were much more um, dire than, than that. Uh, there was a dearth of qualified for primary, secondary school, a dearth of qualified nurses, no allied health professionals. The region and the country depended on imported food to feed the population, inaccessible roads, and much dependence upon government to produce jobs and other opportunities. So the decision then was made to petition the national legislature to grant permission to develop a comprehensive university, which was what we did. And that resulted in the charter, which um, I think folks should be familiar with, which folks should be familiar. If you're not, um, ask the president to show a copy of of that. That first year then um, I <laughs> spent my time looking at the needs and trying to find resources because you have to know that I was given that first year which would be 2008 okay. $250,000 US dollars which was um it sent me to shock because um, I had just come from a university where my section of the budget was $45 million. Wow. <laughs> so to get, to, to get, and that was not the whole university, that was just my, as provost of the university. So to get $250,000 given the need uh, means that I, to um, look to develop um, resources for the university. So one of the first things was looking for uh, personnel who would be willing to come and help me begin this process. Um, and um, then looking for resources so before I left for Liberia, I visited a number of institutions and organizations in, um, in the States uh, looking for assistance and also looking to recruit people to come to the university. Well, to make a long story short, uh, in 2000, now, on this day, I got we got word that the ch uh, charter application had been approved, and that we would um, have a university. But the chat, the critical needs: uh, how would students be able to attend college? Uh, what? kind of faculty would we be able to get infrastructure needs, building renovations, classroom, technology, because there was nothing there. And there were no admissions records, no registration, no student record, nothing of the sort. Hmm. That we would need uh, mobile technology to enhance teaching, that we would, would need high-speed connectivity, et cetera. Uh, and so 
I set about, uh, as I said, trying to find funding. Uh, and one of the things, first fund sources of funding was I submitted a grant to UNDP and um, they were able to provide us with some um, assistance by renovating a number of buildings on campus. So the uh, money that the government gave us, we were able to renovate what is now in the College of Education, but then was what the university site would be. And that's where we began the university. Um, we started <laughs> uh, on the environmental scan, the meeting with stakeholders within the country. We decided we would develop five colleges and those were College of Engineering and Technology within engineering, civil engineering, electrical engineering, and renewable energy, mechanical engineering, computer science, and engineering. And later we talked about cybersecurity. Then the College of Health Sciences, there we looked at public health nursing. And the third area, I'm not sure if that's still a priority, which was an RN to BSc in nursing. Then the College of Agriculture, uh, and there we had general agriculture, food science, College of Education. And in the College of Education, we brought something to mm. Liberia that wasn't there the first of its kind, which was a degree in early childhood education, um, then elementary, secondary. And the other thing we brought, which was first of its kind in Liberia, was guidance and counseling. Okay. The next um, was, I was reluctant because I saw a lot of colleges in Liberia develop in this area, which was a college of management and administration, but the folks kept pressing, and so we developed a college there. And we then later added a college of arts and sciences where students get their general education. So I don't know, I'll eat from now. Okay, Doc. Uh, now, as you rightly said, you contacted people uh, far and wide who would come to help you. Are you still in touch with those people who I would want to term the pioneers uh, who were here, they left their comfort zones to come uh, and uh, kick off the uh, Tupman University? Well, some of them, not, not, not all not uh, because we recruited quite a number of people uh, through the government contacts uh, the governor president ellen johnson certainly they had um relationship with not established a relationship with nigeria and they sent over i think it was nine uh, professors in various areas um, when that uh, for commit, committed term, when that was over, many of them left and went back home. But there were a few that remain, um, uh, Dr. S uh, Sunny Dawudu, and um, I'm not sure if he's still there, um, but we were in touch for a little while, but I've lost touch with him and his wife, uh, Ola Su, who was um, in the library. Folks that with whom I have um, frequent contact are Dr. Joe Isaac, who was our vice president for um, administration, the first. Uh, my 
and size it. Uh, Dr. Elizabeth Cabaos uh, occasionally um, threw the year here from her. Um, uh, Rita Townsend uh, is one with whom I have contact. And even though he was in Liberia, but uh, he left Monrovia at some point to come to Harper, uh, Johnny Woods, who is now Dr. Johnny Woods. Uh, and I recruited him to be on the TU Foundation board. So those are uh, some of the folks with whom I have regular contact. Okay, Doc. And of course, our Professor Iona, uh, Thomas Connor. Yeah, she's still here and still helping out at Phoenix Radio. She's ever willing uh, to help out, especially when we're having these trainings and, and what have you. And uh, the child broadcasters, she's always with us, uh, helping to teach them personal hygiene and whatnot. So now... Doc, yes, uh, as she and others put together um, a proposal for a reading writing center, and sent that to the foundation board. And we committed ourselves to provide funding for that. We are now working hard to get resources to provide the funding, which we hope we'll be able to provide by January of 2025 to enable the center to open. Thanks, ma'am. Uh, I believe that uh, many people are going to be happy about this. So, uh, Doc, TU now boasts of six colleges, five colleges added to the Mother College of TC. Uh, what would you like to see happen uh, from this point on? Well, you have to understand that I'm not <laughs> the president of the university, and I'm not uh, on the board of trustees. Those are your governing folks. Uh, I only chair the foundation board and our sole function is to generate goodwill and resources for the university. Mm -hmm. um, but as a president emerita, I think I would always like to see the university move forward and strengthen because established a university. We said that we were building a university that would be second to none within the region, not just Liberia built within the region. And so I'd like to see that come to fruition. I know that there have been some setbacks, but moving forward uh, to make TU the stellar institution that we envision, and I think there's movement toward that. Now, the Mother College of Engineering and Technology um, is actually, one would say, not up to modernized standards. How would you, how could the Foundation Board help in in that regard, in improving the uh, technical college uh, and maybe moving it to an advanced level. We now have uh, uh, technological advances and what have you? Well, the you have to understand that the president is the face, the head and face of the university. And so the foundation board works in tandem with the president looking at what hits priorities are. Um, and the board had in the past committed itself, given the board's interest, but also some identified needs at the college. One was a commitment to female scholarships, and that's a commitment that we continue to honor. So we have said, for example, and we committed to um, five female students 
from year one until they graduate paying their tuition and fees. Um, okay. And we began that process based on what was identified. So that's a priority. The other priority that had been identified by the president was faculty development. Uh, and that's something that the board is looking at. How do we get partners that we had started that process when President Rev. Wilson was there because a board member whose university was um, in technology had tried to work with the university in identifying its technology needs and having her faculty work with them. But it was an unstable relationship. It kept fluctuating. Mm. So that would be something that would be revived based on this president's priority. Um, the other area, of, of course, I mentioned the Reading Writing Center. So we're looking at that. Uh, with regards to the, the College of Engineering, um, the president hasn't raised that as a concern at this point, or if I'm not mistaken, but you under, have to understand that the foundation board is a group of people who are donating their time and their resources to help the university uh, seek resources and funding. So at any one point, uh, we focus on what's before us. So if this, this meaning the College of Engineering is a priority, then we would ask, I mean, the faculty and whatnot that the president raises that, again, being specific about what the needs are and whether the board is able to to assist in any way. Okay, Doc, uh, we just want to take a very short break to remind our listeners that we're in conversation with founding president of Tapman University, Professor Dr. Dr. Elizabeth Davis Russell. Today is her birthday. Today is also the anniversary of commissioning of Tapman University Radio Phoenix, as well as the charter day of Phoenix, that's of Tapman University. Doc, let's continue. Since your retirement, TU has had years of troubles and instability, which was primarily due to the lack of respective coherent leaderships. Given your years of sacrifice to grow the institution, how has that made you feel? <laughs> I chuckle here. What do you think, um, right for that? What would be your guess about how it made me feel? <laughs> <laughs> I could be wrong, Doc. <laughs> you could be wrong. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> well, it was distressing to me um, to hear of the difficulties that uh, the university was experiencing and getting reports consistently about how things were deteriorating uh, or things that we had accomplished were being disassembled or whatnot. So it got so bad that I told folks I did not want to receive any more information because it was depressing. Mm. And I had begun to question whether the eight years of my life that I spent in Liberia Mm, mm. Years away from my family, years away from the things that I were doing in I was doing in the states, whether those were wasted years. Mm. And when I would voice that, folks would say to me, "Doc, no, there are some folks there, students, etc., who have been touched by what you have done." Because my whole purpose, uh, Rashford, into going into education, because as you know, I have a degree in clinical psychology. I could have gone, spent my time 
exclusively in clinical practice, which would be financially more lucrative than going into education. But I was dedicated to education because I saw it as a way of making a difference for the better in the lives of students, particularly students who didn't have the advantages that I had or that others like me had. Uh, so to sum up, yes, it was a uh, very distressing uh, to hear that. So it was, uh, uh, and it was also a point where members of the board or foundation were getting discouraged as well, mm. because when you go to raise funds, uh, yeah, potential donors want to know about the university. And in all the institutions I've been in the States, the president is the face of the university, so the president is there to talk about what he or she is doing etc. And when you don't have that, it makes it uh, extremely difficult. So in short, it was a difficult period for me. Wow, we are so uh, sorry about that. Uh, yeah. Uh, so Doc, now what is your re relationship with the current president of the institution, specifically Dr. Olu Menje? It's been a good one. I think when he was appointed, he reached out to me. Uh, he said because everywhere he went, he heard Dr. Davis Russell, Dr. Davis Russell. And so he wanted to talk with Dr. Davis Russell. And we had a good conversation. And he's been quite active uh, with the board, has attended the board meetings. And in June was at our face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, and is an active um, participant, keeps us abreast of what's happening through his written reports, uh, President Update. So uh, he's been and continues to be um, a good partner with the board. Right. Now, is the foundation board in touch with other stakeholders on the ground in Liberia? And how is that relationship? Uh, by stakeholders, I mean uh, people like the Maryland County Legislative Caucus and the legislature in general, as well as uh, other maybe prominent citizens and, and, and board members, board of trustees members. No, I think you have to understand the difference between what the foundation board is and what the board of trustees is. The board of trustees is your governing body, your policy making body. And so it is the only one authorized to have contacts with legislators, et cetera. Okay. We are not, we just, we just work with groups and individuals to obtain resources. So we're not involved in decision making about the university or anything of the sort. Okay, Doc. Uh, before we take leave of you, uh, let's let's talk a bit about the Radio Phoenix's uh, Child Broadcast Month, which you fully supported. We want to use this time to say thanks, I as the manager of the station, on behalf of my entire staff and the child broadcasters, we want to say a big thanks to you. We now have our jackets and the, the kids went through their training, even though they're now in uh, uh, the sc grade schools are now in session. Uh, we are going to, by next week, design weekend schedules for them. Thank you very much. Oh, it was my pleasure, Rashul, and thank you for the work that you have continued to do with the radio station. Uh, and really nice looking at training young people so that they begin to think about journalism as um, really valid and 
profession that contributes to the outgrowth in the pursuit of truth and integrity. Yes, it's very difficult, though. <laughs> but that we want to say happy birthday again and uh, happy Charter Day to you as well as uh, happy anniversary to Phoenix FM. Is there anything going on today? Any activities? Uh, were there any activities? Well, not really, uh, but there's something planned because this is the weekend and uh, I believe that in the coming week, because the president is, is expected uh, back on the ground in next week, so we we are sure of having. But Phoenix FM is going to be certificating its um, child broadcasters. The university uh, printed those certificates, and in the coming week, we're going to certificate them. Well, thank you very much, and I hope that probably within the next two years I'll be able to make a visit if I would say God willing. Okay, <laughs> we <laughs> love that. <laughs> but given given the challenge of traveling to to Harper, it is very daunting, and I know you have your personal stories. Exactly, and. You know, when when uh, at one point thought about making T-shirts that said, I traveled the road or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> and have Indeed. a picture of, car stuck, of the car stuck in the mud. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, uh, but it's certainly my hope that as the rainy season comes, that it won't be as as difficult as it's been in the past. Right, and uh, the the incumbent government has uh, that's the central government has been trying to to do some work. Uh, at least it's it's easier to travel from here to Zwedru, and uh, there there are indications that they're going to improve on the uh, segment between Zwedru in Grandjida and uh, Ganta in Nimba County. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, it's uh, back on the years we had when we had one generator that we moved from residence to <laughs> office. And <laughs> and uh, the generator was in the office buildings during the day, and we took it, let it rest, and then <laughs> use it to power the, the residences. Uh, having to bathe in buckets until we dug wells and wow. had a what running <laughs> water system, and um, having electricity brought in. So uh, those are things that your new students don't know about, or even your new faculty. Right. I remember telling, having orientation with new faculty one time and shared with them what we had gone through that first year. And, the, and I think it helped to put things in perspective for them so that their complaints seem like minor compared to what we had endured that first year. Yeah, so, what an experience. A joke. A joke in my family is that my husband offered to give a course on pocket bathing. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, indeed. Okay, Doc. Those were the days, Rosh, but Right. Thanks uh, very much for all you do. Okay, and uh, maybe next year uh, we're going to try to improve on our traditional interview by making it possible for people to participate maybe by, by phone or something and, and interact with you a bit, if you don't mind. Not at all. Well, uh, by next year, you might be able to do Zoom. Right. So the interview would be conducted by Zoom. Yes, and uh, we have these gadgets. You could just simply connect to the... Uh, equipment here and then whenever someone calls we could just patch it through 
and then you'll hear the person loud and clear and hear exactly maybe they have a question or uh, a compliment or something. Okay. All right. Just pray that I'm alive. <laughs> You're going to be alive. What? <laughs> we can't lose you right now. <laughs> What? I'm 82 today, Rochford. <laughs> wow. <laughs> we wish you long life and good health. Thank you. Thank you. My regards to all. Okay, Doc. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, that was uh, President Emerita, Professor Dr. Dr. Davis Russell, in that interview. We want to say thanks uh, to all of you for your uh, listening role. And let's close it up with the ode of Tapman University. Thanks for listening. Bro.